Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Welcome back to Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. This is Casey Rathburn. I'm a student at the University of Houston College of Pharmacy and our APHA ASP chapter president. We are at the APHA Institute on Alcoholism and Drug Dependencies in Salt Lake City, Utah. Today, my guest is Brian, who's an attendee of the Institute. Uh, welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Casey. Um, yeah, so I'm from the University of Rhode Island. Um, I'm a pharmacy student. Um, I'm also a computer science student doing a little crazy double major thing there. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it can get stressful at times, but um, working through it like everyone else um, and hopefully make it out. But um, yeah, so at my school, I'm a member of APHA and um, yeah, uh, I don't take any pr- uh, particular leadership roles in APHA, um, but I'm really in tune to teaching. So um, at the school, I uh, TA one of our classes to the P1s. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an autonomic pharmacology course and um, this will be going in now my second year doing that. So I'm really in tune to teaching, and um, actually particularly one of the reasons I came here was to uh, learn more and be able to um, apply and teach in um, the community practice that I'm able to do um, at CVS. So that is kind of what I do a little bit. Nice. Okay. So um, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, what did you originally come for, like, and hope to get out of the Institute? Um, So it was actually... um, a friend who had recommended the Institute. I had never even heard of this place, um, but I lived with a, a friend, Patrick Condon, um, mm-hmm. and he gave this place stellar reviews, and, and he said it was by far one of the best experiences. So initially, i um, not going to lie, I initially uh, came here just based on that recommendation, but mm-hmm. after looking into it, um, I came for a little bit of selfish reasons. Um, I have family members who are personally afflicted by addiction, mm-hmm. um, and I've never necessarily confronted a lot of those issues, so um, a little bit of mix of the recommendation, um, a little bit of the selfish reasons to work on myself. Um, but also, as I said, the, the teaching aspect of it is, is something I'm truly passionate about. Mm-hmm. And um, hopefully, and I know, um, the information we've got here um, will put me in a perfect opportunity to be able to apply this. And I, I honestly, I've been working in pharmacy. Um, I know I'm still in school, but I've worked in pharmacy almost four years. Mm-hmm. Um, I think very few pharmacists have this kind of training and, and where... Uh, and probably one of the best professions to identify some of this. And one of the keys of this conference always was we are the touch point. Sometimes we are the first person to maybe identify these, mm-hmm. minus potentially the family, but we're we're the first um, opportunity for a lot of these patients to potentially address and, and even hear it from a professional. So it's very important that uh, pharmacists do get this education. So that, that's those three reasons. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, So what do you hope to do with this information when you get back as far as those three things that we just talked about? um, You know, how do you expect to relay this information? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question. Um, Because uh, with with a lot of information, but not any ideas, it's kind of just wasted, right? Right. (laughs) Um, So I've been brainstorming all week. Um, Some things that I wanted to do when I went back um, and I've been lucky enough and hopefully people listening to this are lucky enough uh, to get this training, but also to have, um, the support around them. So mm-hmm. when I go back, I have three great pharmacists and a preceptor. Um, I work at an intern, um, at CVS in Massachusetts who I want to say more or less give me a free reign mm-hmm. on, um, implementing some of the things that I want to do. And they give me free reign on counseling and, and, and really taking my own education and our, our patients, um, health into my hands, mm-hmm. um, which is an amazing opportunity as, as an, uh, a student pharmacist. Yeah, so, definitely. Things that I was looking to do was um, just simple things like getting printouts, being like, if you're selling needles, like, this is how to properly dispose and use the, uh, the needles. Mm-hmm. Um, or even just posting um, AA references, like, like these are the local meetings. Just having all those materials in the pharmacy organized. And then and then letting the know the, the, the technicians and the pharmacist around because it mm-hmm. needs to be a team effort. So hopefully going back, I want to really rely a lot of the information I get to my staff there, mm-hmm. and hopefully, um, with the support of my pharmacists, we'll be able to implement some kind of um, nothing like too over over dramatic, but right. just like resources for people to use. Because I feel like right. a lot of pharmacies really lack that. I agree, and that's really awesome that they give you that opportunity to do that. Um, where in your state do you see um, the biggest need for that? Do you see a lot of it in the retail setting? Well, so my first experience was actually before I was in pharmacy school, and. Um, 
if anyone knows Massachusetts, um, Worcester, Massachusetts is probably one of the worst areas for mm -hmm. um, like the heroin epidemic and the opiate epidemic um, as a whole. And uh, so I was a sophomore. I wasn't even, I don't even like 20 years old yet. And I, I saw firsthand, like on a, on a single day, they only had me ringing. But every hour I'd see like three people coming in for needles. And yeah. so I think in a community setting, um, maybe a little bit less where I work now because I've since moved out of Worcester. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, 100%. I think any anyone in the United States in a community setting has to see this. Yeah. Um, especially if your state offers um, you to sell needles uh, over the counter, which I'm pretty sure all 50 states do. I could be wrong about that. But I, I think any student pharmacist, any pharmacy could benefit from some, some education like this. Yeah, I agree. So do you um, see opportunities in your school? Is this something that you guys get educated on a lot in your school? Or do you think that it could you could bring back more information to help? I mean, especially with like your teaching position. Yeah, no. Um, that's a great question because yeah. I've been fortunate enough. I, I go to the school at University of Rhode Island, um, and actually two of the professors who are here are actually from um, Dr. Anita Jacobson and Dr. Um, Jeffrey Bratberg. Oh, wow. um, gave very good lectures here. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the people at my school um, are are trained to a point where they can identify some of these issues, mm -hmm. but nowhere near as thorough as this. Um, I feel like we get the very the the, the kind of like just skimming the um, the the swimming pool, if you, if you right. will. Um, and if, if anyone's interested in it, um, I definitely recommend coming here, but I think my school does do an adequate job of teaching us some of these skills, but just mm -hmm. not all of them. Gotcha. Um, okay, so why do you think it's so important for us to become educated in this way and specifically, you know, come to Institute to get more of these skills? Yeah, so specifically this way, if you're kind of like implying like that way we were, it's very... If, if people are listening who don't uh, know this, the Institute was very structured around mix of very clinical education, but also like emotional information. Like what we sat through, um, A meetings, um, narcotics, anonymous meetings, Al-Anon meetings, um, things I had never known about, or, or I had known about the names, but never understood the process. Mm -hmm. So the way we're learning it here really gives it kind of like a right brain perspective of it, the emotional side of it. Because I think most of us in pharmacy school, school do get the left side of it, yeah. where we're understanding the information. We, we get the medications we want to use. We, we get the kind of therapies we're using, but we don't get the, the soul part of it. So mm -hmm. I think this kind of education, something like this institute here, is almost necessary, you know? Like, right. We're, we're trained to be robots occasionally, and, and this kind of education, I think, should be more widespread. I think there shouldn't just be one institute. I don't think there should only be a couple student pharmacists allowed per school. I think it should be widespread across the country. Right. So I, I, I very much, I, I would vouch for this, this style of learning, and it's, I think, almost necessary. I agree. I know I talked to somebody about um, not only the professional growth you get out of this conference, of why it being so many people's favorite, but also just the emotional growth you get um, and, like, personal growth. Um, so how do you think that this experience will impact you, um, others, and, you know, your future practice? Okay, yeah. So for me personally, um, being someone who uh, is um, has, has family members who are personally afflicted, mm -hmm. it, it gives me a lot of emotional comfort um, from sharing my story here. Um, and, and for me, moving forward as, as a, an individual, it gives me a lot more information, a lot more options for, for how to better help myself. Mm -hmm. um, and professionally, as we were saying before, I am very deep about education. So I, I definitely want to get into the education about this, um, mm -hmm. starting like a Generation Rx at my school. Um, we do have a small portion of it, but really expanding that role. A hundred percent, I think it's going to be something that... I'll hopefully be able to again bring in my practice and bring to my school and teach others about it. And mm -hmm. it'll be a lifelong thing that hopefully I'll never forget. And, yeah. and some of this information was very dense. So <laughs> going back and having this entire summer to really like look at it and, right. and really narrowly focus and hopefully help people. Do you see yourself going into a more teaching role? when you go to practice pharmacy? In I, I think so. Um, so as I said at the beginning of the podcast, I'm a, a computer science pharmacy double major. Yeah. And sometimes uh, I have this inner turmoil of which one do I like more? And um, I, I'm like a hyper nerd about both of them. And yeah. it's, it's great because I get both sides. Um, but I, I think I do want to go into education. But realistically, trying to merge the two um, mm -hmm. is obvious. But but anything I can do to help people, that's why I'm here. Right. Um, and and I don't necessarily know now how I'm going to be able to merge the two. Mm -hmm. um, 
but but I think yeah, it'll it'll probably be a mix of both education and a little bit of patient interaction. Yeah, I think they always say you have plenty of time to figure it out. Plenty oh, I'm only I'm only a P three, so <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm milking that until until they tell me figure it out. So, um, so what has your favorite session been here? Do you think or sessions if you can't pick? Yeah, that's tough. So when we we're talking about like just like the the the, the interleaving of the clinical and the emotional side of it, mm-hmm. I, I have to say the emotional side for me has been by far the favorite. Mm-hmm. The The first night we had a um, Alcoholics Anonymous meeting and er, people were crying. Like very few times have I just been in, in that much shock and having goosebumps. All like people's stories, the raw emotion, like mm-hmm. that is the best learning experience. Um, even if I'm not personally afflicted, mm-hmm. um, although I am, um, and, I, and you can see it all throughout the room, is everyone gets that that feeling. So mm-hmm. as much as the information is important and you need to know your information to pass the boards, to, to yeah. practice, but to be a human being and to have that kind of education is... So that, that has to be all of the meetings we went through. Yeah, I know at least at my school they talk a lot about empathy, but I feel like here it... It didn't. I didn't really understand empathy as well until I attended one of those meetings, and then it just brings a whole another level to it. It takes your education to uh, in yeah. my, in another level, and it's. Um, do you want to tell the viewers about um, the difference in the meetings, um, as far as like the open meeting and the single speaker meetings? Yeah. So there, there's a lot of different types of meetings that like Al-Anon, Narcotics Anonymous, and AA kind of follow. Oh, um, just, uh, what is Al-Anon? Yeah. I okay. Know that's the one that a lot of people don't know. So actually, yeah. So I mm-hmm. didn't know about it either. So this yeah. is actually a great time. Um, so Al-Anon is kind of like, um, it's like the AA for the family members. Mm-hmm. So if it's the people who have been personally afflicted, either a friend, um, their parents, their grandparents, a cousin, um, it's for anyone who thinks that they need help mm-hmm. with with coping with it. And honestly, I didn't know that existed before, and more people need to know that it existed, and yeah. more people need to be given those resources. Um, so that's the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, but the difference of like the style of meetings specifically is when you have a speaker meeting, you have um, typically someone who has gone through the addiction or has gone through kind of the, the process of coming to terms with someone else's addiction, um, and they share their story and it's typically one with a happy ending. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of just sets a stage for a story and it's very moving. Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of the more open meetings is where I think the more stereotypical a meetings kind of come from the movies where everyone's kind of sitting in a circle and it's like, Hey, my name's Brian and I'm a friend. Yeah. Um, that kind of stuff. And that's when anyone can participate and, there's different versions of that, like open to anyone, closed to specific groups. It could either be gender, if, if you feel like you need a specific gender and isolate it by gender, mm-hmm. or um, religion. Um, yeah. You can do a lot of things with it. So there's a meeting for you. You just have to look it up. Um, and th- those are like the, the basic differences. Yeah, and I think definitely if um, you get the chance to attend any kind of those meetings, um, it's definitely beneficial, not just for students, but pharmacists and beyond. Um, so what do you recommend for anyone that's interested in attending the Institute in the future? 100% do it, uh, without a doubt. Like, I I don't even think that could be, you just need to come here. Um, you should be more prepared than I was. Um, you, you shouldn't just do it based on a friend's recommendation. Really look into it. It's such a, it's a beautiful place. We're out here in Utah. The mountains surround us. Um, just, just come here with like an open mind though, Mm -hmm. because, um, if you don't, like, you're not going to get the full benefit of it. So right. definitely having an open... And that's for anything in life. Always have an open mind to whatever it is, even if it's not your viewpoint. Um, if, if you think um, people who suffer from substance abuse disorder mm-hmm. are inherently, like... And this is not my viewpoint, but like, disgusting. Just get throw that out. Like, yeah. just come in here with an open mind that people are people, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Definitely. Break the stigma. And uh, just because I know you went on the hike with me as well, do you want to tell them a little bit about that, the hike, and kind of the experience of that? Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So the hike, um, I'm a person who, who played sports in high school and everything, and I thought I was in shape. Um, but, man, when the air gets a little thin, it, it gets you um, breathing really heavily. And I, I, yeah. But <laughs> the fact that we're all here on such an emotional weekend – and all pharmacist students were kind of all a little out of shape yeah. um, in our own degree. <laughs> For sure. Um, but we all kind of came together, and and it's, it's definitely an emotional week where, where we're all kind of talking to each other. But 
just going up there, all the encouragement. And um, so if anyone doesn't know, Salt Lake City, Utah is pretty much surrounded by a bunch of mountains. Mm -hmm. Um, We decided to go up it. But there was just so much encouragement, positive energy. No one was really upset about it. Everyone was super open about everything. Yeah. Um, So definitely worth it. If you do come here, do do the hike. Um, And just remember, just bring lots of water, um, as they like to say here. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And and some nice, comfortable clothes and some uh, shoes you can climb with. Yeah, definitely. And just keep going. Just remind yourself to keep going. I definitely was the same, you know, thought I was fine and shaped do my spinning all the time. But the mountain was a whole new feat, as well as um, I'm from Houston. So we have humidity in the air constantly. So that air up there is wild. (laughs) Yeah. And emotionally, at least, like when you're going up, like if you're ever doing physical exercise, you realize how strenuous it is. Mm -hmm. But with the, the perspective of this weekend, like these people... Anyone who subs, uh, suffers from substance use disorder right. has gone through something a million times worse. And right. I think every person walking up that mountain kind of felt like that. And, mm-hmm. and that gave them the extra energy yeah. to climb up that like almost straight uphill at the right. end there. I and agree, especially if you've been affected by it personally. You know, that's what I kept thinking. It's just my family that has overcome this and just how um, much they worked. And then I could just keep going just a little bit further, a little bit further. Um, Absolutely. So... Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, and sharing, you know, all your experience and stuff. And thank you again, Pharmacy Leaders Podcast, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com in print ebook and audiobook thank you for listening to the pharmacy leaders podcast with your host tony guerra be sure to share the show with the hashtag hash pharmacy leaders 